You're watching Single Process with Joe and Bob. We created this video series to help you navigate the difficult process of divorce and we hope this helps you on your journey. Our episode today is on blending families and also introducing your kids to a new significant other, even pre-blending. Yeah, I want to know how you're supposed to do that because I actually have a girlfriend who every time she started dating someone, she would introduce the kids to these guys and then they'd break up. And I I think that was a little overwhelming for the kids, right? What happened three times and finally the kids said to her, like, are you going to marry this guy? Because if you're not, I don't want to meet him. <laughs> so, All right. Well, there's obviously clearly ways one should do this and totally. one shouldn't. Right? Well, we're going to talk to an expert. So Trevor Molyneux is with us. Trevor is a licensed family and marriage therapist and also the author of the book, Blending Families, Merging Households with Children Ages 8 to 18. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, good to be here. All right. So us, I mean, so when you know when should you even start dating after yeah. the whole divorce? I do think everybody needs some time to to get over the hurt and the loss, and and sometimes you know it's widowhood. Mm -hmm. You're maybe blending out of uh, death as well. So take some time. Get you know take care of yourself. Maybe a year, two years. Let's say minimum six months. Give yourself some time to get yourself back on your feet. When you start dating. Keep it away from your children for as long as possible. Okay. I really do believe you need to be in a relationship that's very serious, that you're actually thinking you're about to maybe marry this person or move in. So to your friend who probably felt excited and thought these guys <laughs> were right. fabulous. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I understand the enthusiasm. Just take some time because you really don't know I yet. I think the difficulty is you want to see this person you've just met. Mm. And if you are the primary parent, mm. yep. you have very little free time. And yes. if you don't That's want a fair any comment. intersection between mm. your kids and this new person you're dating, mm. you don't get to see them very much. And I think yeah. that's why a lot of us... You know, yeah. introduce you sooner in. than we should. Yeah. If you can, find sitters, find ways or play dates, ways that you can make some boundaries around okay. this. Because yes, you do need to date. You do need to start developing your personal life again. You need to do it away from your children. I believe as long as possible. Really okay. have the felt sense that this person's really your person and you're now intentionally getting ready to introduce them to your children. How should you introduce that person mm. to your children? Um, again, age appropriate. Um, okay. I would say young children, you're going to maybe do something like go to a park or go do something fun, maybe a hayride or whatever, some, you know, what a seasonal fun thing, outdoor thing that's easy and simple. Um, if that other person has children, same kind of thing and keep it a very small amount of time. You all know, of the kids together? Patch. All of the kids together? Yeah, the maybe if they're all little, you know, really? a little, very, very, again, very small amounts of time, see how it goes. Again, age appropriate, think about it. Okay. Um, as they get older, maybe a movie, maybe where it's not so much on one-on-one -on -one looking yes. at each other, but yes. do something that's entertaining or maybe a, a whatever, playing video games or whatever it might be. Do it outside of your homes, doing it away, not in anybody's territory, so to speak. Right. So, uh, you I know, agree. people Safe start space. to... And the message to the children is you don't have to love any of these new people in your life. We just want you to be kind and respectful to one another. That's a good point. That's I think it's implied that, oh, we're all going to be together no, now. You, you may not actually along. like each other. And that might be okay, too. Okay. But just being kind, which means being thoughtful and not mean, and being respectful is just where we're going to start. Start okay. from there. And literally communicating. You don't expect anything. Now you're keeping expectations low. It's not quite so scary. Because, again, the children are starting to feel really, you know, possibly threatened by this new I attachment. I love what you, you just said. I think kids yeah. do feel yeah. threatened. I think yeah. they see this other scary. kids coming into their lives. And other are they going to be replaced? Other. Change is threatening. Change Terrible. is anxiety-provoking. Yes. yes. All right. Well, okay. let's say you're now living together. Mm -hmm. And you are all under the same you roof at times. You took the plunge. You took the plunge. Mm -hmm. How do you do you discipline each other's children? Ugh. What happens yeah. there? This is a really, really tough one. Okay. I really suggest that biological parents. Well, first of all, you have a basic value system. Now you've made a mission statement for your blended families. Okay. Something oh, to the effect of we all love each other, or it, I shouldn't even say love each other. We respect each other. We're going to be kind to each other. And we're going to make a safe haven where everybody's in here. Each person feels loved and seen and heard and valued for who they are. Okay. Right? So you as a step parent is starting to make an effort to make a relationship with this new child and get to know that child. Maybe a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one. go for ice cream, go for a rollerblade, whatever it might be. Do what the kid likes to do. Okay. And try to really understand and care. I feel like care. you're ingratiating yourself to this kid. You're trying to win this no, kid No, you're trying to get to know Connect this kid. Them. Okay. Connect. Thank you. Perfect word. 
any kind of disciplined biological parent first. But again, we have agreed, right, on what are uh, appropriate behaviors, right. uh, what are not, okay. what are consequences, what are rewards. You know, have those early talks with your, your new person. Okay. So you really have the same idea. Like, I'm kind of a stickler for good table manners. Yeah. I'm one of those people. Yeah. So <laughs> I think every one of my stepchild would, children would say, and I've parented step parent to three now, wow. that they have really good manners, but it started off pretty well, lawfully, and it'd be like, sit up, elbows off the table, you do not bring your, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now they're all pretty glad, but it took okay. a little time, and there was a little rubbing and fighting back, and their dad was very supportive and did not undermine me. Which he, is terrific. That was an agreed sort of, this is a, this is a decision we both made. So you bring up a good point, mm -hmm. you know, and table manners made me think, oh, you're at my table, or you're at your mm -hmm. table. Mm -hmm. I think that's difficult too. Whose territory are you on when you move in together? Mm -hmm. Whose home are you in? And so mm -hmm. whose rules are you living mm -hmm. by? And I think when you don't start somewhere neutral, mm -hmm. you feel like you're living in the house rules as opposed to your new mission statement it's rules. It's a really tough thing. And if you can possibly afford to do it where you start fresh, in a new place where you both have moved oh, out and ideal. now come together, that is the ideal. And sometimes it's not possible. And then that's the other point where you need to sit down, not with the children, but your new person, yes. partner, and you say, okay, so how are we gonna do this together? And that person does need to be very mindful that he or she needs to make space for you emotionally. Um, everything about that, you, this is your house too. How are we gonna do this together? It, it takes a lot of intent and love and compassion, truly. So I've heard the other side of the coin too, and your sister does this. She doesn't involve her significant other in any of the stuff with her kids. She literally draws a line and says, I'm your mom, your dad and I will be at your events. My mm. boyfriend, my future husband will mm. not be. Mm. What's your take on that? Uh, I've seen that backfire terribly because the noose eventually, if she marries this person, that's, that person feels really left out. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing worse than being in a family and feeling like an outsider. Okay. So I've counseled so many spouses, blended family spouses, who are like, I never felt like I was part of the system. Okay. I was always an outsider. And you know what? As a step parent, all you want, all you want to know is that your influence has been heard. Yeah. It may not have been taken, but at least you had a say a or a word, of part of something. Yeah. Right. So let's say your spouse, your yeah. ex-spouse, starts a new family. Mm. Now your kids are feeling really left out, second mm. citizens. like, And they immediately think they're going to be replaced. Yes. And that's really terrible. I mean, talk about sheer attachment panic. Mm -hmm. um, so you really need to encourage your spouse to make, or ex-spouse to maintain a good relationship with those kids. And also sometimes it can be a very positive thing. Because now they have blood relations with this new mm -hmm, partner. True. Again, you have to be that big-hearted, kind ex-spouse to be like, wow, that's wonderful, and say to your children, I bet you're going to have a wonderful time with your new baby brother or baby sister. How wonderful. And remember, that child will be part of the inheritance and all that other stuff. So good relationships are Tough. always a positive. Mm -hmm. And i got to be honest, my children have step, I'm sorry, half-siblings, and they're very, very close, and they're a beautiful family. And I'm just so glad that my now ex-husband's his ex was so supportive and welcoming to me and my children that she created i think we all created an environment where they could be close and i think this is a good point because i my, my parents divorced when i was in my 30s mm -hmm. and i don't mm -hmm. think you grow out of these issues no. i still struggle with my dad's new family so mm -hmm. i think there's a lot to learn here yeah. and mm -hmm. it's a book i think we should be reading absolutely thank, thank you so much Trevor. thanks for being here thank you for more information on how to blend families the right way please visit our website singleprocess.me